Good morning. Welcome to our morning prayer this morning. Um, you're looking a bit foggy, or maybe that's just me glasses. <laughs> Actually, I think they do look a bit uh, atmospheric. I think if my lens is a bit dirty, let me go and fix that for us. There we go, that's better. <laughs> that's much better. I definitely a sermon illustration in that, isn't there really? Cleaning the lens made the picture clearer. Morning Paul and Christine. Morning Lynn. Morning, Margaret. Good morning, welcome. Welcome to our morning prayer on this beautiful, bright Monday morning. Uh, welcome as we spend time recognising that God is with us. And so perhaps you'd like to grab your morning liturgy or just let you know I'm going to be producing a new uh, morning liturgy. Uh, I try to change them kind of every so often. Uh, Lizzie will get one too. Um, but it's not uh, for uh, this week, it's for starting next week. So the new liturgy will come out as part of the, uh, the bulletin. Um, so you'll get the bulletin that's available on Facebook as well when it comes out. So I'll produce a new morning liturgy which will begin next Monday. So today, Wednesday and Friday we'll all be using our existing liturgy. So shall we begin? One thing I've asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen, Lord have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen, Christ have mercy. We say together, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Well, we're out of the Song of Solomon, <laughs> uh, so we're on to Deuteronomy chapter 1, uh, starting at verse 3, and we're on to John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Deuteronomy 1, starting at verse 3, and I've just warned you now, uh, I've got some rather uh, interesting pronunciations to give you, <laughs> so they are not exactly uh, true to the Hebrew original, you'll need to forgive me. 
Deuteronomy 1, starting at verse 3. But 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt, on the first day of the 11th month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them, telling them everything the Lord had commanded him to say. This took place after he defeated King Sylon of the Amorites, who ruled in Heshbon. At Edredi, Edredi, he defeated King Og of Bashan, who ruled in Astaroth. While the Israelites were in the land of Moab, east of Jordan River, Moses carefully explained the Lord's instructions as follows. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, You stayed at this mountain long enough. It's time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites, until all the neighbouring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, the coastal and the coastal plain. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I'm giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land I swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and to all their descendants. Moses continued, At that time I told you, you are too great a burden for me to carry all by myself. The Lord your God has increased your population, making you as numerous as the stars. And may the Lord, the God of your ancestors, multiply you a thousand times more and bless you as he promised. But you are such a heavy load to carry. How can I deal with all of your problems and bickering? Choose some well-respected men from each tribe who are known for their wisdom and understanding, and I will appoint them as your leaders. Then you responded, your plan is a good one. So I took the wise and respected men you had selected from your tribes and appointed them to serve as judges and officials over you. Some were responsible for a thousand people, some for a hundred, some for fifty, some for ten. At that time, I instructed the judges, you must hear the cases of your fellow Israelites and the foreigners living among you. Be perfectly fair in your decisions and impartial in your judgments. Hear the cases of those who are poor as well as those who are rich. Don't be afraid of anyone's anger, for the decision you make is God's decision. Bring me any cases that are too difficult for you, and I will handle them. At that time, I gave you instructions about everything you were to do. And now we move to John's Gospel. It's John chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. So it's fascinating, isn't it? We've got two passages, one which is really about order and about uh, life and keeping it going and dealing with problems and how we need to organise well and very much the kind of natural. And then we move to the supernatural, don't we? How God, in his grace, has revealed his love and his, uh, his power by rising from the dead and ensuring our resurrection from the dead as we trust and believe. So what's happening with your day? What's happening with your week? Maybe there's some things you're really looking forward to. Maybe you're going to the pub tonight. <laughs> or maybe there's some things you're dreading and worried about. So let's just take a moment, shall we? 
Let's just take a moment to give our concerns to our loving Heavenly Father. Father God, we give ourselves to you afresh. Thank you for your love for us, which is still outrageous, seeing that you are the God of the whole universe, and yet you know every hair on our heads. Lord, we give you our joys, praying, Lord, that we would know you in them. But also, Father, we give you our concerns, the people and situations that we're concerned about, that are, that are burdens for us. Father, as we give them to you, we pray that you would work in those situations and we pray that you would bring yourself glory. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, shall we say our, our hymn, our canticle together, shall we? And we say, Christ is a light, illumine and guide me. Christ is a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Christ is a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left. And my right. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this Monday morning for our morning prayer. Uh, blessings upon you. For those who I don't know, uh, it's lovely that you could join us here at St Peter's in the amazing village of Ruddington just outside Nottingham. Thank you for joining us for this morning prayer. And so may the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Keep safe. Hopefully we'll see you very soon. God bless. Bye bye.